Hi, this is Brother Richard. And today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 404. <clears throat> we're continuing with our lesson title, The Fall of the Fourth Empire. This is Part 3. Scripture teaches <clears throat> the Fourth Empire <clears throat> will enter its final phase with the death of the seventh king. We said that the scripture teaches <clears throat> the fourth empire is symbolically composed of two groups. Seven heads, ten horns. The seven heads represent seven dominating kings who will appear one after the other. The ten horns represent ten kings who appear simultaneously. The death of the seventh king <clears throat> is a sovereign move by God. His instruments will be the ten evil kings which will bring the fourth empire into its final phase. Turn to Ezekiel 28 verse 6 to 3, and we see judgment pronounced on the seventh king. Ezekiel 28, starting again, verse 6. <clears throat> We're going to read down to verse 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee. Now, the word strangers comes from a Hebrew term, zur, which means foreigners. So we're describing <clears throat> these individuals. Number one, they're called strangers. And they're going to be brought forth upon this king. Who are these strangers? <coughs> it says the terrible of the nations. This is what they're described as. What does that mean? The word terrible comes from a Hebrew term meaning tyrannical of the nation. So it's talking, telling us that these individuals are oppressors of the nations. What nations are they oppressing? Well, it's not referring to the human <coughs> condition because the nations, <coughs> human nations, are already under Luciferian dominion. They're not being oppressed by these individuals that are taking out the seventh king because these individuals are being released from prison themselves. Mm -hmm. What is it referring to? It's referring to their oppressing the nations at a point in the past during the Luciferian reign. <clears throat> they were tyrants that dealt harshly with the nations that were under the Luciferian influence. The inference being, if a nation was in opposition to the Luciferian influence, they would come under the tyrannical influence of these individuals to bring them back in line. <clears throat> this continued until the time they were imprisoned. <clears throat> this shut down their activities. Well, now they're being released to continue doing what they were doing during the Luciferian era. So these are purely spiritual entities. These are basically... Um, or do they have bodies? Oh yeah, they're... Um, <coughs> um, what Lucifer is? Um, A cherubim. Cherubim, okay. yeah, of that family. The uh, cedars of Lebanon, the, the ruling cedars. hierarchy okay. Okay. 
of the angelic. So who is the group? I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting confused here, but who is the group which sounds like terrible of the nations, who are spiritual, incredibly negative, and appear to, to be more terrible than these? Um, yeah, I'm at a loss to, uh, where was that? Um, they, I thought they were called strangers as well, but it, you, you may be referring to Oh, you're to talking thing. about Ezekiel 7th uh, chapter. Oh, it talks about <coughs> the strangers and the yes. evil of the earth. Yes, the evil of the earth, okay. Well, those are individuals of the first half of the fourth empire. Right, but are they, are, are they spiritual beings or do they have bodies as Both. well? Both. Both. Yeah, their time is their time is coming is where they're all going to come under the influence of these guys. Right. So they haven't been wiped out. They just are absorbed into this. They're still doing their thing when right. this happens. Okay. <clears throat> so what we find here, <clears throat> we want to take a look at these tyrants a little further. Scripture indicates these hate <clears throat> the Antichrist and they <laughs> hate the city that he rules. The harlot city. Turn to Revelation 17, and we're going to look at verses 16 to 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God, for God, hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. This is Ezekiel <coughs> 28, I will bring the tyrannical of the nations right. against you. For God had put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So we're looking at this from an Old Testament perspective and a New Testament perspective. These ten tyrants are going to be released at a point simultaneously in which their first act is going to be assaulting the seventh king and assaulting the harlot city destroying them both so should we understand that the ten kings throughout their reign are more in the foreground than the beast meaning does he use them to do his business uh yes well basically they become in the background okay they, they are initially focused the focal right. point because of what they are being incited to do. Okay. After that, the spotlight falls on the, the 11th horn, okay. the beast. Which brings us to the next principle. <clears throat> Scripture indicates, actually it teaches, hmm. after the Antichrist is slain, by the ten kings, the beast will take over his body and his identity. Revelation 13, verse 3. Revelation 13, verse 3, And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after, wondered after the beast. <clears throat> so he's going to receive a head wound that takes him out. If you want to know what happens to him? Let's go back to Ezekiel 28. Hmm. 
Ezekiel 28. <coughs> Starting in verse 7. Down to verse 10. Therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. What does this mean? This means supernaturally they're going to take away his power. Mm -hmm. Neutralize his power, make him defenseless. Right. So is he famished in the same way that YH3 and Elohim would famish? Uh, no, because his power is not going to be drained. If it were drained, the beast couldn't take over. They're going to neutralize his ability to use it okay. against them. Okay. Mr. Jones. Yes. Is it necessary that all ten of them have to be in, in alliance to take him out? No, it's only going to be one that does the actual job. But they come up as a group of ten. Hmm. You'll see that later on. Ten come up, <coughs> confront him. One kills him. The others wipe out the city. Give their power over to the beast. But if he, go on. So, because he has Satan's power, Satan's authority, exactly. he has more power than, than the ten. Than the ten? Well, no, well, no, no he no, can't. He no. can't because they kill him. Mm. Yeah. Well, they neutralize his power and then they wipe him out. So, the question is, does this imply that the father minimizes or diminishes the power received from Satan? to allow those ten to do what sure. they're doing. Because Satan's power... This is all under the, the right. Father is right. doing. He's sending them to take you out. Right. So this is what they're going to do to you. Mm -hmm. He's telling them how he, what's going to happen to them. <clears throat> they're going to supernaturally <clears throat> come against the beauty of thy wisdom and shall defile thy brightness. Right. So this is Satan's brightness, beauty, and wisdom, right. which they're going to neutralize. Right. They shall bring thee down to the pit. Talking about to take his soul, mm. literally down to hell. Thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him, so it's one guy, before him that slayeth thee, I am God. But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth me. So the ten are going to appear. One guy is going to do the assassination. The other right. nine are going to be busy taking out his city. And then later on consolidating the power into the hands of the beast. Okay, Josie, I'm imagining this happening, but do they do a surprise visit? Because does he not know, because he's being told what's going to happen, does he not know that his, his doom is right, coming? He doesn't have a clue. You see what happened before. <clears throat> he's sitting there in his glory and his pomp thinking he's God. Sure. All of a sudden, these guys appear and then, hey, take, him out. take the reevaluation of what's happening. Yeah. So I think the point is, is that even though uh, Elohim, or the Father, is proclaiming what's going to happen to him, he, the Antichrist, is not aware of the pro pro uh, no, proclamation. It's like Satan is sure. aware. Yeah. All this has been, been said, this is what's going to happen to you. Falls on deaf ears. Now you would think, because they read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> if only they paid attention. But they don't believe what they read. No. Uh, verse 10. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. So the God is engineering all of this. Yes. We read in Revelation 17, God has put it in their hearts to do this. <clears throat> now, having said that, <clears throat> we said after the Antichrist is slain by the ten kings, the beast shall take over his body and his identity. <clears throat> Turn to Revelation 17. Verse 11. 
and the beast that was and is not. Now this is referring to the 11th in line. Not the 10 kings, the 11th. It says he was and is not. What does that mean? That means at one time he was active on the earth. Now he is not. Just like the ten kings at one time were active on the earth, they got imprisoned. He got imprisoned. <coughs> Let me ask you something, Mr. Jones. So, he's active on the earth along with Satan. Yes. Okay. Satan has his entourage. Are they cherubim? When you, you know, we were talking about the Luciferian era is a time when he was active. When Lucifer got imprisoned, cast down, he got cast down. Lucifer was partially imprisoned. He has a limited ability. This guy didn't. He's totally pinned up along with the ten others. So when it's talking about the beast that was, it's talking about the time that he was an integral part of the Luciferian system back then. Okay. So, what? well, you just answered my question. See, I thought he was his own entity along with Satan and they both had their own kingdoms but he's part of Lucifer's kingdom. Yes. Okay. Yes. Back then. <coughs> when they got imprisoned, well that shut down. At this point a new page opens up. It says he was and now he is. He's back on the scene and this is what he's been given the authority to do. <coughs> The beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Mm. And we said it was seven kings. Sure. Well, it says now he's the eighth. What does that mean? He stepped in. There's only seven kings, but he merges with the seventh king. Yes. Yes. He is the eighth and it is of the seven. I think you tried to explain I that. I think so. <laughs> It didn't end it didn't, well. Yeah. <laughs> he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. <clears throat> so he's going to take the identity of the Antichrist. Nobody is going to know what happens. They're all going to think it's the Antichrist. Not the second. Yeah. Because they know the Antichrist has got slaughtered. They see the Harlot City wiped out. They know he got butchered and the kings of the earth and all the rest of these guys are mourning and weeping and wailing and all the population is, that was in his providence are, you know, it's like <clears throat> Nasrallah when he got taken out by the Israelis. Uh, you know, everybody's mourning. Wanna, they want to proclaim a day of mourning and whatnot. Yes. Okay, so are you telling me that the ten kings that take out the Antichrist are mourning over it? No. Okay. The people that the Antichrist ruled over are mourning his passing. The kings that ruled with him are weeping and wailing over the ruined city. They think it's all done. The Antichrist, who is actually the beast, makes a miraculous appearance. And then everybody suddenly falls at his feet because this is so unbelievable that he's just able to take up them all the marbles at one time and go on and do what he wanted to do. Is it because the beast is an advanced person, angel in, in that realm that these ten don't know what happens? He knows what happens. He, 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 no, he took no, no, no. The ten act as a group. The ten have wiped out the city. One of the ten wiped out the Antichrist. Everybody knows what's happening. The ten agree to give their power to him. So you have one group, kingdom, one kingdom that has these ten kings who give all their power to this one guy. So he's, he's ruling the whole thing himself. Do they know he's going to take over the Antichrist's body? Sure. Okay, well that's sure. interesting. It's they part give, of the plan. They, they give them their power to do something. That, that, that's the reasoning. That's the reasoning. It's a plot to take over what the Antichrist once ruled. That is what? 
Satan's seat, Satan's authority, and to dominate the authority of the other Luciferians. So in other words, they want the whole world, and they're right. going to get the whole world through this plot. So I'm imagining Satan giving this human, or giving the man, his seat, power, and authority. Okay, so now that's not a light decision to be made, no. but you're definitely doing it. Now, what it's going to take to do for anybody else to take that, let's say there's another angel standing there, and I'm like, I want that spot too. Yeah. But it's the father exactly. that releases the yes, beast yes. to take that opportunity. Yes. On. These people would never dream of what's about to happen until it happens. Well, they wouldn't dream of behaving the way they're behaving. It wouldn't, yeah, it they wouldn't can't come to their mind. deal with <clears throat> what's happening. Sure. When the city gets wiped out, you see it in Ezekiel 28. The princes of the sea are mourning. All right. <coughs> You see it in Revelation 17 and 13, the world is on its knees because this guy was the mover and shaker right. that set everything else in motion. The well, the 10 kings and the beast are gonna come on the scene to eclipse all that. This is all the father's plan. Nobody has a clue sure. about what's happening except the father and he's doing this to engineer Great what thing. he told the Lord. They're all, all of them down for it. Right. <coughs> but let's go on. So we see <coughs> the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. Ultimately, he's going to go down to destruction. The ten horns, which thou sawest, are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So they all come up at the same time. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall hate, these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Praise the Lord. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples multitudes and nations and tongues, human race. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So this is all from the Father. Yes. <coughs> Now what we find <coughs> turn to Revelation eighteen. Verse, starting in verse 8, we're going to read the background, <coughs> the background in which the beast makes its appearance as the Antichrist. <coughs> Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. So it's going to happen suddenly. One minute she's riding high, crown jewel of everything, full of pomp and pride. The next minute she's wiped out because the ten kings are released. They don't lose any time. They take out the, the Antichrist, they take out the city. Everybody's in a state of shock. <coughs> Verse 9, <clears throat> And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, from one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep, shall weep and mourn over her 
For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold, and it goes on to all the stuff that she was dealing with. This is the state of people <coughs> at the time of the destruction of the Antichrist in the harlot city. Now, <coughs> he makes his appearance, Revelation 13. I'm going to briefly go back here a moment. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. His deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. In other words, he's going to make this dramatic appearance on some high pedestal somewhere saying, I'm back. <laughs> And everybody's going to, you know, I just painted a picture for you. The kings are mourning. The merchants are in a state of total depression. Their world is collapsed and burned. All of a sudden, this guy makes a dramatic appearance. They wonder after, wow, he's back. But he goes further. What does he do now? The first thing he does, he, remember he's got power from the ten kings. He's got power. He's made deals, wheeling and dealing. He goes after the two witnesses. Turn to Revelation 11. Okay. <clears throat> Starting in verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, this is Y H V H, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. That's three and a half years. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. We know who they are. We read about them in the Old Testament. Sackcloth. Yes. <coughs> if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So what's happening is all the time that the Antichrist, the Harlot City have been involved, these two witnesses have been making life miserable for the Luciferians. They can't bring down the Luciferian system. The Luciferian system can't bring them down. So they're free to speak what they want to speak, when they want to speak it, and bring plagues on who they want to bring it on. This guy makes his appearance, and all of a sudden now he's going to challenge them. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall finish their testimony, when they shall have finished, in other words, the Father has dovetail this all to flow simultaneously. He makes his appearance at the same time they're finishing their ministry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So he makes his dramatic appearance. Does this have the same day? <clears throat> These have finished their testimony. He says, I'm here. I'm going to give you a demonstration of who I really am. He goes after them, declares war, overcomes them, kills them. <clears throat> and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelleth on the earth. Now, we're going to stop here. We know what happens afterwards, but I want to demonstrate something to you. Turn back to Revelation 13.
Verse 4. This happens upon the time that he takes out the two witnesses. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? Make war with why are they saying that? Because they see him take out the two witnesses. He wars against them, they go down, they're out, and the world is in awe. In awe. The beast has made a <clears throat> in one fell swoop he's captured the world mm -hmm. for himself. Satan is standing there, uh, getting the crumbs. Mm -hmm. Say, you know, up until this point, Satan strutted his stuff. He's the guy that orchestrated this, the city, gave power to the, the, the Antichrist and everything. He is the number uno, 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 numero uno. Mm -hmm on the scene and all of a sudden this guy makes a sudden appearance and eclipses everything <clears throat> with this in mind <clears throat> then we see him take control take charge of everything what does he do after that scripture indicates he will then go on to exalt himself above every god Turn to Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verse two to four. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verse three to four. <clears throat> Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except it come in falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, be revealed, makes his appearance, stands on his dais and exalts himself over everything else because number one he's come back from death number right. two he's taken down the two witnesses now only the humans who are not born again because those who are born again will be reading it here have no idea that number seven is in fact number eight not at all. So, as far as they're concerned it's still number seven it's all the, the way same through. guy but everybody else meaning the Safarians and uh, and Joe, uh, spiritual beings fully understand the situation well basically the only ones that really know what's going on are the ten kings the ten kings okay yes the media didn't say the beast has mysteriously disappeared but oh no here he is he's just not he, he's been hiding from us the point I'm bringing up Mr. Jones is how does anybody on the other side of the world know what's happening and where this, where this is happening? Oh, they have the ability to project their image across the world when they want to. When he builds his image of the beast, everybody sees him. You mean China, mm -hmm. Tibet, Timbuktu, you'll see the same thing. The Luciferian ability to project an imagery far surpasses anything we have today. Yeah. That's why they're sending presents to each other. That's why they're doing what? That's sending why they're sending presents, presents to each other. People are sending presents all around the world because of what you've just said. Okay, but UPS, uh, well, who no, knows? Amazon. No, who who no, knows no. what? No. no, you have the ability to take a solid and project it anywhere you want to. These guys dominate the the four elements: fire, air, earth, and water. They're astrologers, they're sorcerers, right. they can project matter, energy. But he's talking about the humans of that time physically sending a present to another human halfway around the world. They have the ability to do that okay. through the Luciferians that are overseeing yeah. this. Oh, so then that's, there, that's, there is that. So then that's UPS you have Plus. To go in and give an arm or a finger to uh, get no, some. No, remember, he, you, you have a guy. You talk to your guide, and the guide says, you send this present to so and because this guy took out the one that was giving us a hard time. <laughs> the, the, 
<coughs> the point of bringing out Mr. John, one of the points is, okay, so all of a sudden, one beast disappears, but another one miraculously, or, you know, comes back to life. So nobody notices that. That's not the way they see it. Yeah, that's not the way they see it. Okay. One beast died and came back to life. That's why they're in awe. They don't realize it's two individual, sure. different individual. They think it's the Antichrist. Yeah. I understand that. But the disappearance all of a sudden of this other entity, he's now inhabiting the body of the Antichrist. Okay, so where he was before that, he was in he's prison Mr. He's what? before that. He's in prison. The father mm -hmm. released him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a little slow today. <laughs> the father, the father's engineered a masterpiece of deception. Masterpiece. Everybody is fooled. The deceivers are being deceived. <laughs> Miraculous. Anyway, <clears throat> so what we find, Paul, 2 Corinthians, I mean 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verse 4, he makes his appearance that man be revealed, the son of perdition, verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He is capitalizing on each one of these <coughs> conquests yeah. that he makes. The first is a false resurrection. <coughs> the second, <coughs> defeat of the two most powerful opposing forces that enable him now to stand as supreme. And it's easy for him to say, None of you guys were able to do that. I did it. Me. Worship me. No opposition. Yes. The two witnesses come back to life. Yes. So does he have to backtrack? Or does he got to get his, 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 entourage, his group, his team, to make up, you know... Um, he doesn't have to do a thing. Let your lion eyes... He doesn't you know, have to do a, a thing. I know that, Mr. Jones. I know that. Because... These people, even though the two witnesses came back to life and are resurrected, 7,000 people give glory to God, this happened in the little corner as far as he's concerned. The whole world is focused on him. Mm -hmm. The two witnesses are no longer in vogue. They're, they're out of the picture. <clears throat> he is now, they're looking for him to reestablish the good times that they were having. Everybody is focused on and in that respect, that's why he's called the great lie. He is the essence and the quintessence of a lie that everybody's going to buy into. <clears throat> so he shows himself that he is God. Taking dominion over all the other gods. Daniel 11, 36 to 37. <clears throat> he has pulled the rabbit out of the hat in the eyes of everybody but in secret <laughs> it's a different story <laughs> verse 36 and the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. He capitalizes on this. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, the Father, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. The Father allows this for a purpose. And what's the purpose? That everybody will be damned. The whole world with the exception of 
those who have the Holy Spirit. Human and Luciferian alike, this is a trap not just for the humans, it's a trap for the Luciferians. They're going to be led down to Primrose Lane thinking something that's a total lie to their own destruction. Mm. For that the determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God, capital God, G-O-D of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the capital G-O-D of forces. This is a war God. Mm -hmm. This is the individual that enabled him to take out the two witnesses. God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. This shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. So this is his inner circle. And uh, of course they're going to keep it secret because they're benefiting by it. Absolutely. Okay, so I was going to ask you that question right there, Mr. Jones. What about his inner circle? Does the circle know that he's a farce? He's he's taken over a dead body. He's just got the power and the you know the authority sure. and all that. Now, because I was thinking, God can send them strong delusion just like He does everybody else if, if He wants to, and get them thinking this guy is the God of gods, you know. But no, they're not fooled. No, no, of course not. Particularly the war god, He gave him His power, so He knows what's going on. But they're all in this capitalizing on the benefits that it brings them. It's like politics today. They're in their little smoke-filled rooms, mm -hmm. doing what they want to do. Lying. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Bringing about their plots and plans for their own aggrandizement on benefits. Like okay. Stock market secrets and stuff like that. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, everything. Now, what we find, <clears throat> before we close out, two main, the two next things that he is going to do is onward quest for supremacy <coughs> he's exalted himself above the gods he is the essence the quintessence of all that is but there are two things that elude him still and <coughs> scripture indicates he will then embark upon a plan to dominate these two groups he wants the Christians and the Jews. He wants the God of the Christians and the God of the Jews. How does he do that? By having the Christians and the Jews worship him. Yeah, it says that he overcomes the saints. He can kill them anytime he wants, wipe them out, but he can't get them to worship him. That's the thing that sticks in his craw. The same thing with these, uh, the Jews that are worshiping YHVH. <coughs> so he embarks on a plan <coughs> to undermine that to have them pay him homage and caesareanship. How does he do that? Well, to get to Christians, he devised the 666 system. Revelation 13, verse 16 to 18. <clears throat> And it causes all, <clears throat> both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, of the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let them that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. <clears throat> Why does he do that? He doesn't need to have... <clears throat> this mark to get people to worship him, they already worship him. Mm -hmm. Turn to Revelation 13. Verse 8. <clears throat> and all the dwell upon the earth shall worship him 
whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So he didn't need the mark, they were already worshiping him. The only ones that don't worship him are those that are committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. That sticks in his craw. We see here, <clears throat> verse 7, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He can wipe the saints out, but he can't get them to worship him. <laughs> Everybody else falls at his feet but the saints. So he devises 666 to pressure them into recognizing him, giving him obedience, obedience before their God, or you cannot exist in this world. Yes? I thought the image is one who designed the 666 system. It is. <coughs> it no, is. It's actually the full sports record. Uh, no, it's the image. Mm. Revelation 13. <clears throat> yes. Verse 15. And he, false prophet, mm -hmm. had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should okay. both speak All and right. cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he, the image of the beast, causes both all, both rich and great, poor and free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and their forehead. Okay. <clears throat> Secondly, he wants the Jews to worship him. Turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 15. To 21. <clears throat> when Ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. <coughs> and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. But then shall be great tribulation, which was not since the beginning of the world, to this day, no, nor ever shall be. His desire of entering the temple, shutting down the worship of Jehovah, and having it focus on him is what cause, leads to great tribulation. Him engineering under the image of the beast 666 which is designed to capture the worship of Christians <clears throat> is the ultimate design for him to bring everything under his control <clears throat> next lesson we'll go into that a little more <clears throat>